Lee, Lee, welcome to the show! Whoa. After so many years, you know what the Singapore identity is? Home is when I felt I think I got it. Here I am trying to make a song about Singapore and it got banned. I never even wanted this career. Here with us today is Singapore's most well-known composer, singer, songwriter, playwright, director, fashion designer, and businessman, ah, Jake Lee. Wow. Welcome to the show! Whoa. Whoa. Legend! Many, you many hyphenated, uh, multi-multi hyphenated person. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> yes, you are most welcome. welcome. Are you, are you happy to be here? Very happy okay. to be here. <laughs> we'll check back after this. <laughs> so, I mean, first and foremost, this year you're actually commemorating your 50th anniversary in music in wow. August. Wow. Yes. How are you planning on celebrating? Wait, you come from how old? It's a career anniversary, not yeah. age. No, 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 no. I no, wish no. it was age, but it's a career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So 50 years ago, I released my first album. Oh, wow. Yeah. When okay. I was, you want to, that's the next question, right? When I was um, 18, so I'm 68 oh, wow. this year. And my, my albums have always been released mm. on my birthday. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, so. Always in the birthday month or birthday itself. Oh, oh. So intentionally I'm, or just what happened to me? Just, it happened by chance the first time and then I followed ever, ever are since. Are you saying that you're okay. releasing an album soon? Ooh. No. Ah. Uh, I'm releasing <laughs> nowadays like one uh. album. You know, now it's like singles. Greatest singles. Uh, singles, uh, singles okay, okay. Greatest yeah. is how dare you. <laughs> you look at him and you say, how dare you greatest hits Anyone now? Anyone does greatest hits? He's only 68 years. Matchbox 50 did their greatest hits <laughs> after 15 years. But that's Matchbox 20. That's true. No, I've had a few greatest hits out already. So, so I know. Oh, true, yeah. true. I am yeah. you. So but I mean, I'm doing concerts. I'm doing mm. uh, two concerts on my birthday. Okay. To mark the, to, uh, the anniversary. Right. To work on the actual yeah. Celebrating. 5th August, working. 23rd and 24th. My Why birthday is on dinner, 24th. for example? Because concert lah. Do no, concert. He, he is also going to eat dinner. But <laughs> Celebrate every, every year I do dinner. You know, this it's is true. something special. Every day also special, we do dinner. <laughs> 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 Every birthday, I mean. So a lot of people know you for your music, of course, and especially here in Singapore, right? They will attribute you to most of our favorite NDP songs, but there's actually a lot more beyond that that you do. So events, fashion, and even restaurants. Oh, yeah. Before you became a musician, you were actually already running a very successful events company. Mm, yes, because yeah. being a musician was not really a great option. I mean, it was not like sustainable the, in, right. in, in, in that time. Right. I mean, and, and admittedly, I think even today, it's, I think musicians, young musicians, Challenging. face, face. Uh, in my time, when I was a kid, at least you could play in a bar or lounge mm. or something. So live musicians, right. you know, had some, some way to go. But I didn't want to take that option because it meant playing um, requests. You know, you go to, mm. you play in a lounge and yeah. then you, you yeah. just have to play what people want to hear. Elvis Presley. I, I tried that. <laughs> I did try that and I played at, uh, I had a gig at the Peninsula Hotel. Okay. Ah. Where I played the organ. People would send in Request. on cards like songs to sing and I had to just do it. So you mean that, so you just happened to know all these songs? Yeah. Then do it yeah, 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 last time. Yeah. So you need like- No iPad. You, you know, have to remember. You have a song book. Yeah. Uh. Song book. There was, a, oh. there was a publication called OK Song Hits. Which was a small <laughs> little book with okay, all the current, yeah. 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 all the okay but songs. Not, not the songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he yeah. haven't released his songs yet. Uh, 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 and every it came out almost every month, or I think then oh. all updated. Which every every request so happened. It's the all the songs of the moment were in there. I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just crush and throw away or something. It was just a little book like that. So then after you went into events, my mother had a boutique in Tanglin Shopping Center, and I ended up designing clothes for her for fun. Oh, when yeah. you were very young. I was fact. 16, yes. 16, 17. <laughs> and the reason why she let me do that is because- um, Cannot afford. No, when I was <laughs> even, no, she used to, she used to import clothes for children up to 12. Oh, okay. shop was okay. called mid-teen. Oh. And I was a teenager and had friends, like friends and like female friends, like convent right. friends, my sister, for mm. example. And they had nowhere to buy clothes at that time. Because right. you're not adult yet and yeah. you're not a child anymore. Right. So I ended up designing. Oh, interesting. See. And making the clothes for that age group, 15, 16 years old. So and does right. your sister also approve your designs? She had to wear them. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Because she didn't want to wear any more of the 12 year old yeah. thing. Mm. She was uh, three years younger than me. She passed away. Like. She's yeah. my late sister. Sorry, so yeah. when I was um, 11 or 12 or 13 years old, okay. Just go back even yeah. further. <laughs> I used to like fashion, especially I was a big fan of a model. 
a British model called Twiggy, which you probably don't know, but she was a supermodel of the 60s. Right. And I was her big fan. Yeah. And then I started to draw her. Right. I draw, drew Twiggy, you know, and then <laughs> I got interested in what she was wearing. So I ended up drawing a lot of fashion like drawings at US, like yeah. 12, 13 years oh. old. So when it opened the shop, it was a very natural thing for me to design it. So I can design the clothes. And then one day she had a fashion show a charity fashion show. Oh, so your mom or Twiggy? My mom, my oh, mom. Okay. I never met Twiggy. <laughs> I, <thought that> <laughs> yeah, I never met Twiggy. <laughs> <laughs> you must go and look yeah. up Twiggy. Okay, she I was, she was a stunning, yeah. And so she had a fashion show and I produced the show for her. Wow. Uh, I was 17. I designed the clothes and then I choreographed the show, which was, had a circus theme. Wow. So the show included children's clothes and teenage clothes. Yeah. Right. And I was even modeling in it, okay? Right. I had men's wear as well. Uh. And I wrote the music for it and I sang in it and I produced the whole thing. Wait, then why is your mother's job? Wow. She was just a shop oh, owner. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 A retailer, a retailer. <laughs> shop <laughs> owner. Wow. It's so crazy because like, it was the precursor for you being like the creative director of NDP, for example. or all Exactly. So what I always say is that it's, just like doing NDP, like just, that's how it started. Yeah. <laughs> because I did the whole this thing. This NDP got budget. Yeah. <laughs> it's not free. It's like you go around free, and free, free. Free. <laughs> But then I was able to combine all the things that I like into one thing. Mm. And each thing, each uh, element uh, became a separate career for me. Wow. So yes. the, the putting the show together led me to open my event company mm. and then designing clothes. I went to study fashion mm. and then the music part. Mm. Um, led to my first album the year after. Wow. So when I was doing a bit of the research about you, actually, are you creeped out that people just Google you and then they know pretty much most of your life? No, I, it's more creepy. I Google me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would think that we should introduce you, right? I would Google all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the time. Sure because I have a lot of, I have a lot of imposters and oh. scammers and I use my name, use my- Oh, you're really That's looking a, for <laughs> versions of you, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah all the me. time. But what just now when she read your introduction, right? The things that you have accomplished, was any of it like, oh yeah, I did that? I mean, it's my life. Like, I've been, You're I lived through it all. involved in all those. In a different way, yeah. In, I see. Yeah, in, yeah, I still make music. I yeah. still, well, I don't, I do events still, yeah. you know, certain. I what see. I previously <laughs> didn't know was that, you know the Orchard Road Christmas light up? Oh yeah. yeah. His company does it. No, oh. no, 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 my company, my, I was the creative director for a company. Ah, ah, yes, ah. I did five, five light ups so far. I see. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's enough. <laughs> you know what I realized today? I only realized today that you voluntarily changed um, to shorten your name from Richard okay, to Dina. No, no, what no, was exactly. the process of that uh, and why? Okay, I was named after my father's uncle. Okay. okay. My father's uncle was called Dicky. Uncle okay, Dicky. Yeah. So I was named after him. Dick is short for Richard. Yes. So, oh, so it's uh, the other way around. Yeah, so they, so, so, yes, they, yes, yes, so they need uh, you to have Richard to be Richard first. But after that, you adapted your name to Dick. Then I was always called Dick or Dicky. Right. No, my oh. IC says what? Richard. Richard. You knowing the whole difficulty of growing up in Singapore being called Dick and then you're like, I'm gonna be not a great man not, one day. No, not even growing up, even now. Everyone has a little <laughs> smile when I say my, my name yeah. is Dick. Yeah. But just now when I see you, the eyes. I wanted to be like, it's nice to meet you, Dick. Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir. Who am I to no, call him by his call name? Me, people call me Dick Lee. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That feels more comfortable. Dick Lee, that, yeah. Yeah. That because if you sometimes, um, on some chat groups or something, that word is banned. <laughs> it's true, it's true. If you fact, want to call me, yeah, you have to. Oh. Yeah, this yeah. video might get taken down because of your yeah. name is how yeah. crazy it's this so, is. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was, uh, because Richard is in my, is my official, my, my full yeah, yeah, name. registered name. And on the register of school, all through school, I was called Richard. Ah, right. okay, Until like. I became a singer. My first album then, I, I used Dick. Right, to get attention. Because Richard Lee, the singer, is not, yeah, yeah. Not okay. so. He sounds okay. old at 17. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sounds yeah. fat also. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I just sound like a rich Sounds like an old fat yeah, man. It doesn't sound like thin as Twiggy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's right, but what else is Twiggy gonna do? <laughs> you did talk about how you rediscovered your love for music during the COVID period because you had actually taken a step back from writing for a period of time, right? Why was that? My music career basically started by 
write, me writing songs and then um, performing them because no one else, I didn't know any singers. Mm. So I just, I was a singer songwriter mm. at a time when- Also you was, can sing like also, let's do that. Maybe I can a bit now, but okay. you know. What do you mean you have like- so so <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I wasn't, I never, I will never call myself a singer. Now I call myself a composer, but at that time, ah. singer songwriter was a thing, right? Yeah. Right, right. Mm. Were, and still then, is, like, still pretty cool. But not in Singapore in the 70s. Right. You know, yeah. like, singer songwriter, like what's that? Who cares? I did a lot of that. In, in my teens and then in my early 20s. Mm. And then I sort of stopped when I went to Japan. You know, my whole career took a different direction when I became full-time. It, 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 it became different mm. because the writing became like career-driven. Mm. Before it oh. was like- Passion. More like diary. It's like my diary, I feel, yeah. yeah. So in COVID, you know, stuck at home and all that. So I started to express myself again by writing, uh, that's that's how it started again. You mentioned about being a composer. I'm always very curious because like a lot of people don't know that when they listen to pop singers on the radio, right? Actually, sometimes sometimes they write their own music. Sometimes it's written by someone else. As a composer that has written many hits that people know of that are sung by someone else, what, what does it feel like? Like, for example, if people listen to Home or People Get There and they think of it as a Kit Chan song or a Stephanie Sun song, how does that feel as the composer? Is that okay or do you feel like, hey, actually, no, I wrote it. Honest one, honest one, honest one. No, but it's what I do. I write songs. I write right. songs for, for other people right. who, who, who sell more records than me, right? Mm. Of course, that is a business. You right? wouldn't know because you never released it as you. Maybe you sell me, I know. <laughs> I also release <laughs> home. <laughs> I, 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 I've also released home and it is not the more popular. Right, 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 right. Trust me. Right, right, right. But I'm fine with it because I mean, it's what, it's what I do. I'm a I call myself a composer now. And there's something that most people don't know is that at least 70% of my published work is Cantonese. Oh. I have more Chinese songs or Cantonese songs than English. But songs. you don't even speak Chinese. I speak Cantonese. Ah, okay, okay. And I didn't do Chinese in school. I did Malay. Because right. those days we had a choice. Right. And I'm Pranakan. My family, my grandmother all yeah. spoke Malay to me. Mm. But my mom is Cantonese. Right. I see. Okay. So I didn't speak with her. So when I went to Hong Kong, it was quite okay. I was able to even mm. have interviews in, mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. I can't speak Mandarin at all. Mm. But right. I, I did most of my Chinese songwriting in Hong Kong in Cantonese. Mm. And so that got me used to writing for people because I was suddenly in demand and mm. all the superstars came looking for songs. Yeah. So mm. I got used to writing for other people. Right. Is it built to order one? Or you have like a catalog now? Okay, the way it works in publishing today, as a composer, you sign to a publishing company. Uh -huh. For example, I'm signed to Universal Music ah, okay. Publishing. This singer, so-and-so, wants a K-pop style song. Right. right. And then Universal will look at their pool of songs and then they will send, or uh, they will ask oh, us to okay. Okay. okay, okay. And this is how it works today. So as right. a songwriter, you write, you just write, mm -hmm. and then you, you send it to your publisher. Now. You just send and hope yeah. that, that they will they will push it for you. That's yeah. why you sign with them. They yeah. earn part of your money, right? Mm -mm -mm. right? But for me, I don't do that anymore. I work on commission yeah. right. because I don't want to. It's it's a big, quite young market out there. Even yeah. the writers, they all everybody wants K-pop style. Yeah. It's not my style. Mm. I write home, you know. Yeah. I write, I write ballads, you know. Enough um, radio. <laughs> it sustained me. Let me say that. But um, so I, I write when, um, when people request. And based here, do, working here, my biggest client is the government. Mm. Especially nowadays, they have a lot of anniversaries. Like everyone's reaching the fifty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's True. a lot of uh, occasion they they request songs. Plus SG sixty is coming, and that's next year. Yeah. So uh. speaking of home, right? You actually wrote that song not for the actual NDP, right? It no. was for a songwriting competition, and then after that, when it won, then it got adapted. It was more for a song, a song Singapore song campaign mm. uh, called Sing Singapore. Oh, I, you yeah. heard of it? They, they they used to have it every year okay. in the 90s. The point was to collect Singapore songs. Right. Mm. So songs like, um, I don't remember, Sing Your Way Home, mm, okay. Five Stars Are Rising. They were not yeah. NDP songs. They were just songs. It's like a right. cultural right. building exercise of yeah. songs. Okay, and, right. and then they would select songs. Even my song, Fried Rice Paradise was mm. included. Mm. Mm. So they always have a competition for a new song every year. Right. And so, Home, my song Home won that, that year. Right. And the recording you submitted was yourself singing? Yeah, I just sent a demo in. Yep. And then when they when it, they selected it, then we got Kit 
to sing it. Ah. Right. And then the judging committee, one of the members was the NDP chairman for 1998. Yeah. He okay, liked yeah. the song. Okay. So he decided to put it in NDP. I see. Not oh. as a theme song, mine. It was just a opening number. Oh. oh. Because the, the theme song idea had not started yet. Mm. So in 98, Kit Chan had that, that historic moment yeah. where yeah. she's performed it. Then 99, they got the, uh, the, the they, they commissioned a theme song. Right. From 99 onwards, there's been a theme song every year. Right. So, home started so you are the bar. Oh. But it wasn't a theme song even. Wow, good right. But it's the best and the favorite. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, don't even know if, I don't even know if it has ever been a theme song. Uh, wasn't it recommissioned back or, or something like that? Was it, it was brought back, I think, oh, like yeah, a couple yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, some, but some I'm quite reason. curious yeah. because you wrote home at a point where you were a bit homesick and, and overseas, right? That's why there's a bit yeah. of that bittersweet feeling. You mentioned this in another interview as well. And I'm wondering whether like the more recent songs it's just missing a bit of that more personal touch because you are commissioned to write it and then I'm just doing, uh, I just sing, oh, yeah. Singapore togetherness, togetherness, and then so everybody doesn't feel like they're relating <laughs> to the song. But shout out to Ben song this year, not bad. Ah, yes. Oh, pretty good. About because the then that you've from written. that point on, you're writing for NDP, right? Mm. You're thinking of the crowd. Yeah. They must sing. Whether they can right. sing a lot, you know, That's whether true. it has a meaning okay. and it's very really stressful. Brief, now not a brief. Do you it's think about like, because teachers will teach the primary school students how to sing and so, so do you think of well. melodies that Of course, are yeah, it must be easy to sing. Yeah. The teacher cannot hit um, the high note when she's trying to teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that every other NDP songwriter now, right, will look at home and try and figure out what makes home special. Mm. And then after that, try their best not to copy home. Then very difficult because right? that's your mm. starting point. And then end up copying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it. I don't mean it. Just keep it. The brief is like this, man. We are looking for the next home. Man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's yeah. the brief that's going out. I guess I'm proud of it. I mean, mm. you know, the song is 20 over years old already. Yeah. And that is an achievement in itself. Like. When when the song was written and when it got adapted for NDP, y'all didn't have to change any of the lyrics. It was as is. Yeah. In fact, uh, it was strongly contested at the beginning because the first line of the song says, whenever I'm feeling low, Mm. And so from an NDP point of view, they were saying like, what kind of, what yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. negative- <laughs> uh, Stop, uh, so To be a downer. We had just gone through a um, recession. Yeah. Uh, so there was, there was that, the, it, it did resonate. I la. see. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, if you ask me what works, there is a quality in the song, which I pride myself. Uh, I, I think it is the strongest point of my songwriting, right. which is to capture bitter sweetness. <sighs> mm. It's a very, it's a very delicate thing. It's not happy, it's not sad. Mm. It's just somewhere in between. It's not tragic, but mm. it does make you feel some, yeah. some, something. Mm. And I think uh, I have a lot of that in my other songs okay. that I've written for, say, the Canto Pop. If I can backtrack a bit, right? When you were actually, when the opportunity presented itself for you to go to Japan, that was when you were already 33, right? And you did talk a bit about the dilemma of, do I really want to go into pursuing music full time at 33? At 33? This late in your, this late, uh, sorry, because they are- It's late for, for <laughs> it's late uh, to be a new artist. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what, what sure. changed your mind in the end? Now or never, I guess. I mean, don't forget, I also had a very uh, successful business I was running, right? Mm. And I was the creative director of that. I mean, my leaving it, I was worried for the company. Uh. Mm. Uh, although I, it was in good hands. I mean, like partners um, continued because they knew how much I love music. So they actually told me, go, la, go. If, if it doesn't work, you come back. <laughs> come we'll, back. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep the mm. company for you and you know, we'll hold your That's place nice. for you. Mm. So I went and I'm so glad I went because I, I didn't have to come back. Was that your first time in Japan when you moved there? No, la, I had been so it was a not tourist. A, it was not an unfamiliar. Place. It's unfamiliar when you go to live there <laughs> and not only live there, be suddenly thrust into the Japanese music industry, entertainment system. It was yeah. like, you know, like completely another world. I, I couldn't speak Japanese, I had no friends. What's a weird realization you had over there? That, oh my God. That was your what first culture. What am I doing here? I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect, la, but the thing was that the what led me to go there was that the, the success of the Mad China Man album was so yeah. well received. Unbe yeah, so Japan. unbelievable. And yeah. you know, like honestly never expected it, never even dreamt of it, never even wanted it. Mm. I never even wanted this career. Mm. And 
the the one the one of the I think the most scary thing for me was right after I moved there, my manager and show promoter said you must do a concert tour because the album is doing so well. You must do a concert tour of Japan. Yeah, you know, like five cities. Wow, you know, okay. with a band. Yeah. yeah. I had never done that in my life. You know, I have to just put together a band, do mm. a whole show oh. and tour. In a country thought, that's not your home country. And, and they thought, why aren't you like, aren't you a singer in your country? Yeah. You know, like, I said, yeah, but I only sing in community center. <laughs> <laughs> I play the piano and I sing in, in schools, you know, I go to primary school and sing. But, you know, suddenly you, ha you had to do that and it yeah. had to be professional and it was sold out like very quickly. Wow. Yeah, so I thought I had to really deliver. Yeah, but that you were confident scary. that people would come? No. A match I made came out in 80, 89. Mm -hmm. In December of 89, um, I had requests mm. from Japan and I, uh, I I discarded the request. I thought, oh, this is a, this is a scam. One it's a I joke, mean. right? No right. One, one who wants me up. like that? Like why, why me and all mm. that? So I actually didn't, uh, answer their their request until they came to look for me. They're like, he's oh. not replying. Like, let's just reply. <laughs> yeah, this is not true. Email, yeah. la. <laughs> not email those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fax oh, 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 oh. came in like just in very strange amazing, English, by the way. handwritten <laughs> yeah. from this top uh, top producer. Brass, right. right. Okay. Mm. And then not only that, the Warner signed me there and everything. So it was like, what, like what's going yeah. on? You know, like it was just too fast. Right. So what was that touring experience like for you? When you actually went on the road, right? What was that like? It's like, this is me. Oh, <laughs> this I was made for this. Is <laughs> no, no. Okay. I, I must say that I've always had a, a phobia for performing. Oh. I've um, never been comfortable with it. Even to this day, I, mm. I don't really feel it's me. Is it like stage fright or? No, it's just not me. I okay. mean, unless I can be totally me. And that right. means I don't give a thing See, about, any, yeah, about anything. Oh, yeah. I just go it. there mm. and I just be me. And that's what, for example, my concert in August will be like that. It's just solo, mm. you know, just okay. me and the piano. Oh. And that's how I started. Okay. okay. But having a band, learning choreo, like went to Hong Kong, had to do choreo, right. you know, and yeah. all of that was, yeah. so it was very, very uncomfortable. I guess I'm a showman yeah. mm. at the end of the day. So I just applied myself. Normally I'm producing, I'm directing, right? Yeah. I just applied myself to the process and put myself there. Mm. And so I sometimes make a fool of myself, but I don't mind. I yeah. mean, I, I also don't care. Yeah. Which is part of the whole yeah, experience. I've been, I've been in a show addressed as a banana. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> because you know I had this we thing about we are bananas. Are. Is it Tokyo, Tokyo banana came from this? <laughs> Yellow oh, outside, white inside. Yeah. Yeah. I have a song called Banana. Yes. Yeah. Because my whole thing about being in Japan was that we are Asian, but we are Western inside, but we are still Asian, and right, I was promoting right, right. the whole Asian. So thing. you worry the whole the whole. I know banana. one song. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> <that's fair. laughs> you know, I'm quite happy to be a clown. Although some people say, "Why you? Why are you doing that? You are a yeah. composer. Why?" Are you you dressing as a banana. Yeah, yeah. Richard. <laughs> Some friends are like, Richard. Like, don't forget, I changed my Richard name. Yeah, Richard. I had Richard going for me and I went for Dick. Dick equal banana, same. <laughs> so, I mean, across your career, you have been involved in so many notable projects, right? And I mean, if I can help you up even more, in 1995, you also became the first, and if I'm not wrong, only Singaporean to be awarded with a Hong Kong Film Academy Award oh. for Best Original oh. Movie Theme Song. Oh. And you found that twice. He, so, just, he just remembered. He just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but, but I mean, that was for sure. Oh, yeah, that thing. I was wondering uh, what the kitchen yeah. was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so do you have a favorite piece of work? Whoa. Other than home? There are two, like, two things. One is that one, uh, Snow Wolf Lake, mm. uh, Sweet Long, which is a Jackie Chung Jackie musical. Chung. Mm. Okay. Where the song uh, called uh, Oi Si Wing Hung. All right, I don't understand Cantonese. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have I, translation. Okay. Nothing to do with oysters, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> what, how do you say that in Mandarin? Oh, that was, that was, that <laughs> Thank was you. Proud of you. <laughs> but anyway, I, I wrote most of them of that yeah. musical. Yeah. Uh, so that was, um, it was like the grand climax of Canto Pop. Because right. after that, China took over. Yeah. Mm. It was that year, right? Mm. The other thing was my entry to Hong Kong was via Sandy Lam. Mm. And I did a lot of uh, songs, songs for her, for her. produced her albums and all that. She Those was your two. entry, how did that happen? Um, People it, go to Hong Kong and hopefully do enough to meet her. <laughs> yeah, she, she actually introduced me to Hong Kong. Well, I, I was in Japan recording my first album 
for Warner Japan. Okay. And it was called Asia Major. And in that album, I wanted to cover a very famous Chinese song, a classic. Right. And I wanted to find a, a, a Chinese female singer to sing it. Mm. And Warner Japan contacted Warner Hong Kong. Right. And Sandy was an upcoming artist. So they put us in touch. And the song called Lover's Tears mm. um, was sung by her. Mm. Eventually, I mean, it's long story. She didn't actually respond to uh, my request because my Mad Chinaman <laughs> album has my cover, a picture of me in Chinese opera costume. Yeah. When she got the CD, she thought it was a Chinese opera yeah. CD. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she didn't realize it was. Yeah. So finally we met by chance at SBC. You know what that is? SBC, Singapore Broadcasting Company before me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> SBC 10th SB, anniversary. Before TCS. So SBC's 10th anniversary, she was a guest oh. and I performed ah. it and then I met her. Then I told her, okay. oh, yeah, I sent you my CD, why you never replied? He's so right? yeah. That's That's nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> then you didn't come my country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm in Japan, you know, Japan. <laughs> 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 anyway, we got on very well and she agreed and and then she sang the track for mm. me oh. and then invited me to write for her. And wow. then she had her first concert wow. on the in the Coliseum, you know, that the big oh. yes. and I was her guest. <gasps> so wow. That was uh, my I would say by putting me in that show and and during that show I met all the superstars yeah. who came backstage to say hello. Wow. Right. So I met them all and then I got in I, I started see, yeah, writing no, for all of I them. I see now, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It now makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my yeah. entry, like, yeah. I just want to ask a side question now that you've brought up like the Singaporean identity thing again, right? So your song Fried Rice Paradise, when it was first released, it was actually banned on radio. Right. And- That's what you remember. <laughs> that one, I definitely remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was traumatic. Well, was it shocking for you? It was because here I am trying to make a song about Singapore. This was, this is in 1974, my first album. Mm. So that was oh. already, I was already trying to make a statement about yeah. being Singaporean. And they got banned because of the Singlish. So- So ironic. Right. Like, what? Yeah. Okay, so we have not, we, we have to be ashamed of who we are. Right. And that stayed with me for, for many years, for, for you know, almost 20 years. Mm. Until um, Mad China Man, mm. my eighth album. Uh, so Life Story is my first eighth album. I did Rasa Sayang. Mm. Mm. Which is a rap. I'm the first uh, one of the original Singapore rappers. By there the you way. go. Oh, oh, you know it. It. I know. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that, Shiga? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love him. He, we've collaborated on Rasa yeah. Sayang. Mm. And when I did that song, Mad China Man, it got banned again mm. for the oh. same reason. Mm. So I thought, you know, 15 years later, still no mm. change. Yeah. How That's do we progress? <laughs> <laughs> and then Japan like, right, mm. embraced yeah. me. Yeah. And, and, and I was invited because they found the character of the album very unique. Mm. Right. Kind of Singaporean in a way that was different from other countries' yeah. cultures. Not trying to be someone else. Yeah. Then at that point, the press uh, supported me. Mm. Wow. Because of Pachukang and all these mm. things that were. Oh. So they supported me and then the band got lifted. Right. And that my, then my album took off. Mm. Right. And that gave me the comment. Then I also took off and I yeah. went away. Mm. See, so I yeah. missed a bit of the development of the 90s because mm. I was then doing my own thing yeah. there. That was 15 I was born. years. When? The 90s. <laughs> Which 90s? Which 1990. Part? The first part, 1990. So, so, that, so in my development years, you left. Like, but I know you were too young to know anything. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and, you and me develop, time, you and, and, watch me develop, I could and, be someone. And, and when you were nine years old, home came out, then you knew. Mm. Because then you would yes, be learning yes, in yes, school. Yes, yes. On the note of censorship mm. and all that, in your when you were growing up, right, Singapore actually had quite a few like weird laws and one of them included not being able to have long hair, which you did have. Yeah, in not your that teens. long. But you got chased by police. Yes, because <laughs> that was what, how frightening it was for a teenager who wanted to be trendy. I mean, <laughs> first of all, in, in school, there were there would be hair checks when mm. you assemble at the start. Then the how to hide your hair? Around. No, then those days we were pinned. You cannot touch your ear and cannot touch your collar. Oh. So you wear a very short collar, right? So do you wear you a very short collar? But buy the shirt without- oh, you, oh, oh, yes, No, yes, because yes, uh, yes. in the seventies, right? The style was the big collar. Yeah. Uh, and then in school also you want to you know so we just wear the old fashioned shirt la, that yeah. you don't touch a collar that was one I did that Dupo. and then yeah. pin try to keep behind the ear la. but then when you go out 
After school, then you pull out everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. pull out, pull out, and then take untuck the shirt. We <laughs> 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 the all the same. Times have not changed. Except that then it, you would get uh, the police would patrol at night, especially looking for oh. teenagers or young men with long hair, and then catch them, bring to the police station, and cut your hair. Ah. So it was quite scary. Do you know that happened to the Beatles? Yes, 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 oh. yes. I mean, they didn't cut their hair. La. The oh. Beatles left. They were supposed to come to Singapore. No, but he didn't get caught. He left. successfully evaded. I ran I ran away and fell into the drain because I was wearing platform shoes. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, oh, yes. And that saved me because so I was they couldn't find you because you were yeah. in the drain. <laughs> <laughs> the they want to cry, I cannot cry. <laughs> I think my shoe didn't go in the drain. One, <laughs> one shoe was up there. They look around, they look suspicious. They look around the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. At the peak of like your concert tour and all that, and then there will be a lot of Japanese paparazzi that followed you everywhere, right? And this extended even until, if I'm not wrong, your wedding. So do you think that like- Did they come for my wedding? I heard oh, that, well, uh, uh, have, I read yeah. that they would, they would take pictures outside and all that. Like. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, I, I think it was something that, that I allowed oh. because it was covered on TV. Ah, yes, yes. In the Japanese TV show. Wow. I guess, yeah, I yeah. guess it wow. was a thing. I was a bit of a thing at that time. Yeah. 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 Still is. And, and, and there's another reason for that yeah. because um, the year I got married was the year that uh, that I did a very big musical called Nagra Land. Mm. And that toured not only Japan, but it went to Hong Kong and Singapore. So it's like Asian tour, yes. a, big, uh, a big Asian musical sponsored by Mitsubishi. Mm. And um, this wedding was right in the midst of the promotion for it. Right. right. And so uh, I think it was it became part, part of, of the, the promotion. Of the, yeah, mm-hmm. because my wife, ex-wife was also in the show. Yes. We we're both mm. performing. I see. She was in quite a few of the musicals that you did write. And do you think that, so uh, you were separate, you actually were separated a few years after you got married. And do you think that that affected your work because you did write songs for her and she started in your musicals? Well, she uh, she was uh, my muse, I would say that we met, we, we knew each other since we were in school. Uh, okay. And when I was first writing the songs, she was like the, maybe the first and only person who would sing them. Right. Um, and um, we were also in the Singapore Youth Choir together. And also we had um, a whole teenage uh, time together and the most important contribution that she made to my work is mm. that she was my inspiration la, and my muse. Mm. And I wrote a lot of songs for her. Mm. Um, I wrote musicals like with her in mind, you know, like oh, Beauty wow. World. And, wow. and um, what a flex. My first, the first time I came back from the UK when I, I went to study there and and my, my entry into, re-entry into the music scene in 1982, was that I produced her album right? Mm. before I did my own. Mm. So I produced her album. So she's been, you know, a major part of my, my music career. Mm. Um, when, after we got married, I, we got married in at the, like, not even the peak, I say, I would say my, my career was moving leading, towards the peak up. in Japan. Mm. And then she was getting um, recognition in musical theater. And then she got cast in, um, a musical Cats from Australia. Mm. Mm. So basically, memory. That we, one. We, we we sort of physically right. were apart. So you know we're both uh, we're both both our careers were happening mm. So mm. rising in its own direction. Yeah. So mm. that is usually um, one of the things. That if you mean. don't mind sharing, right? Why is it that after so many years of knowing each other, that y'all finally decide to try? Out, try out marriage, you know, <laughs> at, at yeah. 40, yeah. I think it's because- At 36. BTO. BTO? Yeah, because of the BTO. <laughs> I don't think there was BTO yeah. then. <laughs> Subsidy. Yeah. Um, I would say that it was, uh, we were comfortable with each other. We knew we were like best friends. Mm. And I will say that we, I particularly wanted to start a family. Right. That was my main thing. Okay. I wanted to be like the Von Trapps, you know, like Sound of Music <laughs> with the eight kids. Wow. Yeah. Mi fa so la ti do. And you know, like, I thought that we would have a great, uh, mm. a great, a great 
musical family la. that was uh, mm. maybe a bit so of a naive <laughs> dream and then also to happen to, in the middle, like, <laughs> to happen like at, at this yeah. point of my career was a mistake was, yeah. uh, after that so actually if I'm not wrong at your 30th anniversary you actually did invite her to guest to appear as a guest also right mm -hmm. so y'all did keep in contact after the divorce. oh yeah we still like my 40th anniversary also she ah. performed so you we do okay. perform. I mean, it's cool. My last gig was at Cool Cats, um, mm -hmm. right at the start of COVID. Right, I did a jazz show. Wow, and yeah, she was my guest also. We are still close. Yeah. So you recommend staying friends with your ex? Because we were friends to start with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you did propose and do the whole shebang stuff, lah. There was a proposal. Oh, it's like a. Oh, uh, can't remember, I remember, but yeah. yeah. Shall we? <laughs> it's not a shall we? Your side it's not like oh. shall we? <laughs> I have read this story actually. If is it okay if I share it? Yeah. Uh, based on what I read, is that <laughs> y'all were driving, and then after that you say, "Hey, look in the glove box, ah. Then she opened it inside, got the ring. Okay. Oh I'm yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you forget this part. <laughs> what is going on? I mean, let's just ask you about the. If you read about if you read about it, then it must be true. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. You have such a special weapon. Well, like, where did you read Alzheimer's? all these things? You you. Uh, I read it in a blog actually. <laughs> On a blog. Yeah. So don't know whether verified or not. But like the, whose blog? The writer's My... name is uh, his ex-wife's name. Oh. oh, she wrote it. Uh, based she, on, uh, I don't know whether it's real or not. Because, because, because she has um, a blog now. Yeah. No, you know, I remember <laughs> now. I'm, I'm remembering something. No, because based on like based on the writing, it sounds very um. As I couldn't tell whether it's real or not. Okay. Based, on, based on the way it was written, it's okay. either a transcribed version of like maybe a, a audio interview or what. La. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or fan fiction. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, like, it's true, la, right? I mean, it must be coming yeah, back to you yeah, like yeah, now. Yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> a big, big memory of it. <laughs> That's the story we went with. But it certainly wasn't um, your traditional kind of courtship and all of that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we knew each other yeah. for 15 years, I think, yeah. already. Uh, yeah, nowadays also, it's just BTO, I my. Okay, now you know. sign. She also thought she can have friends with me. Like, wow. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. now, but now is the, the 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 conventional way is that you do have a courtship, lah. I mean, yes, we we didn't. <laughs> right, mm. we were just friends and then got married. Right, oh. it must be weird. <laughs> It's like, what do we yeah. do now? Do we, do we get married? Uh, why yeah. do we share a bit now? We never share a bit in the last 10 years. Mm, how do you know that? Hey. 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 What do you think was the- I feel like you keep bringing us there, but then you tire. Yeah. 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 Huge I tease. I back from the mic when, at the right time. It was slightly after that, that you were, in 2001, if I'm not wrong, that you were asked to be the very first creative director for NDP. 2002. Oh, 2002, mm, yes. Yeah. So what was that like for you? Because you have no roadmap to follow, Ma. Like what does it even mean for someone yeah. to be the creative director for NDP? Of course it was an awesome and uh, quite forbidding um, task. La. Because never having done before, but then having done my mother's fashion show. Yeah, I said, oh, I can do that. If I can do that show, I can yeah. do that. Um, but I had also, don't forget, um, whatever, 20 years or what, 15 years of, of event management yeah. mm. in my belt, oh, right? That's true. Yeah. Under my belt. So I knew how to put a show together. And I had written musicals mm. also. So I, I knew how to stage a show that to entertain people. Right. What do you think is like the main thing behind the scenes that goes into all this prep, right? That the audience doesn't get to see. Like for NDP. Yeah, for mm. NDP. For any NDP, you mean. The yeah. work the work behind it is yeah. incredible, you know. I mean, it is it is quite daunting. I mean, all these kids and all the performers rehearsing mm. for months. And then the rehearsals, there are six rehearsals before NDP. The yeah, full dress yeah. one. Only full six dress. Up. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, the six, six Saturdays before. Yeah, the six Saturdays yeah. are the full on yeah. ones. But before that, there's months of um, separate uh, training. Like everyone does it in army camps and all yeah, that. Right, right, and right. in schools, they're all rehearsing like mad. Mm. Plus there's the costumes, the pyro. All the of that, yeah. Wow. And then all the tendering that goes out to make the costume yeah. to- Are you involved in the costumes also? No, but as a creative director, I choose the team that ah, I, my okay. ideal team to design everything. Right. You know, okay, that, yeah. but everything has to be open tender and then you have to go through like- okay. costumes. How, 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 stuff how does one begin with a performance done by 1000 people? Like, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, 300 of y'all, run it up here. <laughs> triangle, whole triangle. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> then they all just freestyle. Okay, so I freestyle, run it down. 
<laughs> then like randomly you'll see some guy just pick up the cloth, I just pull out a cloth from the side. Okay, just everybody just wave. Yo, wave, wave, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, don't stop, don't stop. Yeah. And then that's the mirror. Reflection, reflection, reflection. How does one begin? <laughs> like that. Looks okay. exactly. Oh, someone exactly. like you oh, yelling at them. <laughs> And all of them wanting to go home, you know, like all these kids, especially. All the NS men. No, super shout outs to the NDP sponsors. I think a lot of them, right, they, their final form come out in a coupon that we get in our goodie bag. But they sponsor a lot of the meals and the fun stuff that the performers uh, get to enjoy. People uh, like KFC, uh, people okay. like For months, you know, for yeah, months. Mainstay, months yeah, mainstay. It was months. the highlight of the thing. You go there on a Saturday, and then when you get a break, you go there, free food for everybody. Have you ever been involved? Yes, eh? one time only. La. As a what? As a marching guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So but that's show, also right? rehearsals, right? In the hot sun. Correct. Because you have done so much for the country and there are very little individuals in Singapore. They are very synonymous with the country, right? Yeah. Do you ever feel like at some point, especially when you are feeling low, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. That the country owes a debt to its, its founding artists like yourself? I think a country owes a debt to everybody who has contributed to creating its identity. Mm -hmm. Especially a new country like ours. Uh, I mean, it has been... Um, the goal of my work in my life to find who I am through mm. my music. It's different now if you sing in Chinese, let's say, mm. because Chinese are Chinese wherever you come from, right? Mm. Mm. Um, and the Chinese culture, you, you become part of that Chinese culture. But for me, I had to become, I wanted to, or I was part of the Singapore culture when there was no Singapore culture. Yeah. Mm. So I made it a kind of mission mm. of mine to find what that culture is. Do you find think what is. after so many years, you know what the Singapore identity is? Yeah, home. I think home is the answer for me. Home is where I, when I felt, I think I got it. I didn't make it very overtly Asian. Sure. It mentions Singapore, mm. but not in a very rah-rah kind of like uh, anthemic way. Mm. Mm. And it's heartfelt. Mm. And I think the identity part of our culture must come from the heart. Yep. Must is who we are inside. Was it very uphill for you in trying to pursue all these very new things, things that were not just new to your family, but new to the country, right? Was it very difficult to have these kind of multiple conversations with your family? They didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they didn't really care, I think. Yeah. They, they were not, I mean, this is just what I did, you know. I mean, you have very early success, so it's easy to support you, right? My father was against it from the start and it took him quite a long time to accept that. Mm. It was. And they'll home um, come out. Well, yeah, I was going to ask what was the turning point. He's the one that cried no, 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 the way before. Like, when I went to Japan, for example. Ah, yeah. Okay. That was a but then success. before I went to Japan, I was already running a successful mm. business, you know, I had shops and all that. So mm. so he was okay. La. There was a moment la, when I discovered he had kept all, he had cut all the news oh. cut things and he put, in a, he put it in a folders, right? Uh, like yeah. a photo album. album. Yeah. And like you cheese. know, when he passed away, I went to his study and he has got like literally 50, 60 of these albums wow. that he had just kept. Such a testament to you though, huh? To feel like mean, 50 uh, albums uh, just you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, my thing. mom also <laughs> have, <laughs> la, but <laughs> I don't think <laughs> like <laughs> <my> album, four <laughs> pages. <laughs> <laughs> But your mom on the other hand was actually quite supportive, right? So I think yeah, from, from when you were younger, your mom even let your three brothers do a cross-dressing band that performed on TV the, as She well. had no choice, that was me. That was ah. me making them do that. I mean, we were, it was, we, we were a group called Dick and the Gang. <laughs> Okay. It's not fair. Yeah, what the yeah, heck? Yeah. The rest must be not very talented. No, 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 no. <laughs> then I don't say I'm the oldest. Yeah, oldest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like cool and gang. So we were on TV. We we were on TV. Those days huh? there was a lot of TV uh, local entertainment. Mm. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm. And that's how I got my start. You know, like yes. I was on TV like almost like every every month. Like, there was right. a, there was a variety show. It's like mm. different. Fight. So I was in. Um, I was, I made them, I made literally made them <laughs> perform together, and they were yeah. cute. Like, I mean, the, yeah. my I was. 16, so my youngest was six only. Right. And then <laughs> we, no, we had young. one item <laughs> where- Listen here, you little shit, my career depending yeah. on you. <laughs> <laughs> and we went, we performed at, at hotels and all that. Yeah, you know, right, hello, right, right. like the Osmonds or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so me, my sister, three brothers. So we did all kinds of things. And there was one thing that we really loved, which was old Hollywood movies. So there was one show where we did a medley of classic Hollywood musicals, okay. which some of the songs were sung by women. And I only have one sister, right? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you, so you say, okay, you all dress up and then we do like, you know, like, like 
But it wasn't all, it was just for that one item. Right, right, right. There always seems to be a connecting point to something that you did when you were young and then eventually it came back to use, right? And so in mm. 1991, if I'm not wrong, the Boom Boom Room was something that you established. Yeah. At that point in time, it was a spectacle because people were coming to Singapore and then they would say, oh, this is a place that you have to go to check out because there's no other place like it. Why did you, how did you come up with that idea and what made you want to do it at that time? Boogie Street. I don't know, you're all aware of what Boogie yeah, Street is. We are aware yeah. of Boogie yeah. Street, yes. Now, yes. you're aware of Boogie Street now. Ah, <laughs> the shocking <laughs> parallel. But you don't know what it was uh, when in, in the oh, past. Oh, right. Probably oh. not. Okay. It was a street that was not where Boogie is now. Oh. It was further up, further down the road or whatever. Okay. So it was a street famous for cross dresses, uh, drag queens. Mm, yes. mm. And it was very raunchy. They closed the street in the night and put tables out and people used to go and eat. Right. So you have you have dinner there and all the drag queens are walking around, but they're all uh, selling, yeah. you know, mm, they're all- Services. Yeah. And then it would get wild when the, the, the US Navy was in town, for example, <laughs> mm. and all the sailors would be there, they'd be drunk and there'd be all sorts of things going on. And that was a, a tourist attraction in itself. Mm. Yeah. And as a kid, I used to go there because we also went there, like we go and have dinner there, anyone can go. Mm. And you just look at all the, the, the drag queens walking yeah. around and they are very open, they were very showy. So when they closed the street to put the MRT, they decided to move Bugis Street to where it is today. Oh. Opposite the, what do you call that mall? Um, Bugis Junction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junction. Yeah, so yeah. They, they, they rebuilt it. Right, okay. Oh. Just as in, in the same layout. Yeah. But oh, without oh. the drag queens, without oh, the Tata. Ah, okay. So There's actually a board there where you can read this history. How Singapore sanitized yeah. Boogie Street. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Gentrification. So we yeah. thought, well, this is not Boogie Street, yeah. right? So this is my company. La. So we decided to open a club and get all the drag queens yeah. to come in and you know maybe give them some Yeah, yeah. Some if not, work. actually they were all displaced for a long time. Uh. Yeah. 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 We got them and we put them in a show, oh, like a lip syncing show yeah. mm. and dancing and all of that. Except that we found that they weren't that talented. Ah. <laughs> Maybe they were talented at other things, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but certainly not at performing. And that was going to be a problem for us because, you know. Also, oh, back then, drag queens are not like the RuPaul drag queens no that way. I yeah. they were more like they dress services. More, yeah. maybe, oh, no, maybe the way they styled themselves was to be as realistic. I see. As you know, now it's all hyper. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. They the were quite uh, yeah. okay. Now they will look a bit more right. natural. Oh, that was their aim. Yeah, right. I see. Other interesting thing is that we had a comedian, which we got from another bar called Cheers in uh, Orchid Inn in Bukit Timah. And this was a bar where all the staff performed. They sang, they told jokes. So we got the comedian to come in and be on stage in the middle of the show. And this comedian was Kuma. And when our drag queens do, did not work, <laughs> we got him to. Oh, we yeah. got him to drag. Right. And so fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually had him on the show uh, two weeks ago, and uh, we got him to speak about his experience as well. So when you were saying that my my boss at Boom Boom Room <laughs> asked me to just go up and tell jokes, then he just got a joke boy. He was talking about you. No. <laughs> my partner. My partner. <laughs> That's always the, the bad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in Japan already. Uh, <laughs> but one of the things that held me that held me back from going to Japan was we were in the midst of opening this club. Oh. So I was a bit like, ah, yeah, we have to, I have to yeah, go yeah. that. So I went and then the club opened. Right. Okay. So that is, the boss he's referring to is Alan, Alan Cole. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. 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 Not me, not me. <laughs> what was it like for you then? Because the, the nightclub opened while you were away, right? So mm. coming back to Singapore and then when you got to visit it for the first time, what was that like? It was great. I mean, it was, I was a little bit worried whether it would, it would take off, but it, it became a mm. bit of a tourist attraction in, mm. in mm. itself. And we had ministers going even uh, incognito mm. and all that. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, that was dicey that. because, yeah. you know, Kuma and his uh, political jokes. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's something I want to ask, because like you, you spent a bit of time um, as, we, as we, we talked about Japan and Hong Kong. Today, do you feel like for an artist in Singapore to do well, do they need to spend some time overseas to, in order to get some success regionally? In my time, there was no internet. Mm. So you had to physically go. But nowadays you are everywhere, right? I mm. mean, you just put yourself on YouTube, you are international. Yeah. You know, and anyone can just 
put out a song on Spotify and say I have a single and that makes me a musician or whatever I don't mm. know so it's so much easier now but again it it's but also uh, equally so much harder la, yeah la, it's easier so yet many, harder you know, do you think that kind of dilutes what it means to be a singer songwriter how good is your songwriting la? I mean you know <laughs> mm-hmm. you know that if you look at some of the more popular songs right you just look at the credits you will find that 10 people wrote one song. Yeah. Right. And it's because it's like a group of people were in a room and they were all singing a bit, a bit, a bit. So they all have to share the credit. Uh-huh. And it's not like mm. like my time where you sit down or even what I still do, I just write the song by myself, right? From start to finish. Mm. There's that as well, of course. Mm. You do have all the Ed Sheeran and all that who do that. But mm. um, it's it's a it's whole different thing. Yeah. But and that's why the, the, the songs are kind of a bit to me, a bit tuneless. The, the soulless, some of the soulless. Yeah. Yeah. Three notes repeated, yeah. you know? Yeah. Four, chord, four chord songs. Yeah. Because right, right, trying right. to find a new chord progression just screws up with your- Are right. you musicians, yeah. you guys? Somewhat, I guess. It's hobby, like, so yeah. nowhere, nowhere near, obviously. Yeah. Nowhere let's, near. let's go like Not amateur, me. then hobbies, then below, then, then we are there. Below there. <laughs> then we are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no but, but they start somewhere, right? I mean, yeah. I started that. No, I'm stopping here, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you then give to like young musicians, perhaps in Singapore, especially with our current climate that might not be as sportive to the arts per se? I'm celebrating my 50th year because I'm still active. Okay, so this is a whole different thing. If I'm not mm. active anymore, I wouldn't be doing this. So my worry for them is, can they, will they be able to celebrate 50 years of their mm. career? Mm. Um, what, what do you have to do? What did I do uh, to stay Relevant. relevant for so long. In fact, that's what the, my show is going to be about. Mm. So if you see, yeah, it okay, will okay, be. Okay, okay, we go, we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you mean you were not going to be? No, I'm not going to be. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's, that's going to be the, the, the sort of the twist. La. It's not going to be just a straightforward concert. It's yeah. going to be more like, um, but then now if you think, if I think about them and I, a lot of young musicians come and talk mm. to me and, and I also worry about where you're going to go. Like before we had TV, you know, we had even up to recently, we had Singapore Idol. I mean, yeah. why I took part in that was because it's a great platform for exposing new talent, right? Mm. Yeah. And that's ended, you know, mm. there's no more of that. Even the Chinese uh, Project Superstar, all no more already. Yeah. Mm. You know, so there's no- Why do you think so? Uh? I don't know. I, I think it's, if I may say, is the, TV stations problem la. Uh, of, they only want to do things that will get advertising revenue. But this gets insane advertising revenue. But it's uh, not the they, same as it used to be yeah. la, with people And also um, and brand names like Idol or The Voice cost a lot yeah. of licensing, oh. which the revenue cannot cover I because see. we are so small. Not only are we small, no one is watching yeah. free to air. But yeah. do you think it's a talent pool problem? Like Singaporeans are a bit too pragmatic. No, too so many, so many great uh, talents like I'm and I'm discovering. I mean, come on, there's a lot of talents. Just that, that were willing to might potentially clone themselves on television. Because to get rejected. If man. there's a good uh, product on TV, you know, but the problem is who is going to watch it? Mm, yeah. it's, it's like seniors and young families at dinner time. They, yeah, they yeah, watch yeah. prime time now. Yeah. Otherwise everything's on the phone. Yeah. And if you don't have that live element, it's quite- Why don't you guys do it? You should create a music show. But we Ooh. don't even know any music. No, but no, we don't enough, it. I swear. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so like, like a hobby stage. stage. Make a platform, I'll work with you. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. let's okay. do a show where we can showcase people and maybe make it even a competition. We have on, a I colleague outside. Over there. We have a colleague outside that was went for the Singapore Idol audition, but he never made it to see you. So he never made it to the actual oh. audition. Oh. Which one? Only the audition before the oh. audition. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the season two. Free audition. The free audition. <laughs> oh, season yeah. two of the Singapore but Idol. But I'm not endorsing him in any way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just telling you he tried. <laughs> And, and he would like to meet you later, but yeah. so maybe, maybe he's better now. I don't yeah. know. You should insult him. You should insult him. Huh? <laughs> get, get him the, as in that was the, the experience. Wanted, you I get experience. Can I ask, right? As judges, do you do you all do you each assign a role, right? Like, what's the caricature to kind of take on yeah, as like a judge? Like you be Simon kind of vibe. No, we 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 were always chosen. We were chosen for our our personality. Mm. Yeah. Right. You know, like I'm the colorful one. You know what yeah. I mean. Just Belief. And let's Belief. stop there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, go down, don't go down the table. <laughs> 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 
Ah, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so we gotta take our pastry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but okay, no, I think, I think, yeah, let's explore producing something. Because it's gonna be fun. No way. So you I, don't I do any music actually, content. Uh, okay, all. so I, I should admit, this is not the first time that we've met, but you have obviously won't yeah, remember I, the first time. Can you Just remind Just go then. 14 years ago, you were oh the God. guest of honor at my secondary school um, graduation, SGI International. You're an SGI boy. Uh huh. And during that, graduation ceremony the, the the teachers asked me to write a song and perform which <gasps> I did oh. and then what happened after that was that I very shy I heard oh my god Dilly is going to be there like out of all the guests of honor it could be Mr. What it's the guy who writes and writes and, writes and you know? <laughs> I was like oh so extra nervous then after that at the lunch I purposely was like I mean, I wanted to reach out, but then I was so scared. I don't want to disturb you. And a teacher actually came to me and said, Diggy wants to speak to you. Wow. And I was just like, no way. <laughs> of course I remember <laughs> every minute yeah. of that. Obviously. <laughs> and then, and then like, you were just I, telling I, me oh, about nice this just now. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was super excited to That's meet you. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, so, like joining politics. <laughs> so like what happened was that I remember going up to you and you were so gracious with your time. I remember you like instead of me asking you for advice and all these questions, you were asking me questions and then you were just so like you were just so humble and like like it was such no, a you. great experience for someone who at that time was like I mean I was maybe pursuing like songwriting and why it was so meaningful for me to just have that mm. interaction with you and I Thank you for that um, very much. What a moment. All those years ago. Before Thank he gave you. out his Full dreams. Circle. Yeah, before he <laughs> gave out his dreams. <laughs> After that, you <laughs> like, yeah. before he sell and join yeah. Are you almost 33? I am then almost 33. Your opportunity is coming. Uh, yeah, your second win will be. <laughs> you can be the Simon in the new show. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for today's painting, painting of the episode. episode. John, do us the honors. I'm always a little bit nervous to pick this up. Today's painting is huge, guys. Yes, yeah. So today's painting is very aptly titled Lotus, as you can see, and it's by a 26-year-old artist named Gary Chong. So Gary actually has an intellectual disability, and this is his perspective into the world about what calmness and respite looks like in a very busy Singaporean society. Got, got, got feels. Yes, so if you would like to look at more pieces of artwork from artists with disabilities, you can check out Shaping Hearts on the 19th of October at we'll our Tempanese Hub. And we'll see you there at our Tempanese Hub. We will see you there. See you there. See you there. Okay. Okay, please pull back so I can do the closing. Thank you. <laughs> so we would like to say a big thank you to Digley for joining us today. Yay! Yay! Thank you very much. Uh, go for his show, his 50th anniversary. You can get tickets. And we'll see you in the next episode. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye. If you I don't mind say. me asking, but I totally understand if you don't want to disclose, but for a company or like anyone to commission D. Digley to write a song, what does that price range even look like? <laughs> no, because right, we two commission songs as a creative agency for our clients. So we're just kind of asking for our business. Lah, but it <laughs> just keep pull. Lah, but just keep pull. Say, yeah. you, you write to enquiries at digleyasia. Enquiries at digleyasia.com. Because you know, like sometimes I do, like sometimes it's just a jingle of 30 seconds. Yeah. I've done that. Mm. And it's very meaningful. And sometimes it's a la. theme song. Sometimes it's a campaign song. Sometimes it's something to rara their stuff. Mm. So all different. Are you are you selective with projects? No. So anyone that comes <laughs> in? <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> the bad China man, everyone. No, I need to say. <laughs> okay, okay. I have turned down like wedding, write a song for a wedding, that right. kind of thing. Like he, his birthday? Yeah, overly personal, yeah, that, that kind of. Okay, okay, depends okay, on your yeah. budget. <laughs> <laughs>